Let's continue on hypotonic hyponatremia treatment. Last video, we talked about how to treat symptomatic hyponatremia, right? And the differentiation between acute and chronic and all these things, how to give the 3% saline, the fact that you don't need normal saline, the fact that you need to check um, sodium every hour while on hypertonic saline. And I, I really advise you, and uh, those patients, of course, it's better to put them in ICU. And I really advise you to get a nephrologist involved if you decide to put or you think this patient needs 3% NS. And we said the challenging part is to keep the sodium correction no more less or equal to 8 milli equivalent a day. So to avoid autocorrection, especially in a chronic hyponatremia, to avoid the avoid osmotic demyelination syndrome. And we said... Um, sorry demyelination syndrome and we said this is more um the risk is higher in a chronic hyponatremia for the conditions we explained now there is no emergency there is no rush either now you stabilized this patient and you raise their sodium 46 milli equivalent now they are more stable or they were not symptomatic to start with okay so what's next now now we as i said all hypotonic hyponatremia they have excess water, right, in their body. And this coming always, there is a combination in most of the cases, is they continue drinking water, water intake, and there is ADH release. So our treatment is directed to what triggers the ADH release and try to switch it off and suppress ADH release, which is the underlying problems, and suppress water intake. So. The first thing that you could do, and it could work for all patients with hypotonic hyponatremia, is water restriction. Water restriction can be a temporizing measure and will prevent any further drop of sodium. And when I say water restriction, I usually CC a day, include all amount of water. And usually we put fluid restriction, not water restrictions, because we want to restrict all amount of water even those included in other type of drink coffee tea soft drinks all of that so this is for sure will help prevent any further drop of sodium and actually will make your sodium start to correct in some cases now in all cases of this hyponatremia that you're treating in the hospital a few things also to pay attention to make sure you check bmp q two to four hours and sometimes every up to six hours but you need to monitor sodium closely to prevent overcorrection and catch it early right until you reach a stable almost normal sodium then you can switch it to every day or you discharge the patients so that's the first thing we talk about water restriction we talked about this this next things check any iv fluid solutions that patient is getting even those they use to mix medications because some medication mixed with D5W. So avoid, you need to stop all hypotonic solutions because they have water, right? And just go back to my IV fluid course to understand what I'm talking about. So that's very important. And sometimes even you need to stop, you need to stop even isotonic solution to prevent overcorrection in some cases. And I'll explain that pretty soon. So remember, this and you need really to make sure they are getting done call your nurse make sure it gets done on time and gets resulted on time now remember when we talked about the possible causes of hypotonic hyponatremia so let's go one by one first one remember said if you have in this stage renal disease or advanced ckd where you have gfr severely diminished to less than 20. they're not producing urine unable to dilute the urine so the treatment here is simply water restriction they have excess water on their body and if if it's kind of acute or the patient is symptomatic you can give the three percent but the treatment really dialysis so you need definitely to get nephrology in these cases the next thing we said if the kidney function is okay to check are they on thiazides and this is mainly you will see the patient on hctz you'll see it mainly in elderly mainly in female and can happen early during the course of treatment or have late onset. The treatment is, of course, discontinued. And it usually happens that they continue HCTZ and they drink water. 
So we don't restrict water here. We just DC, HC, TZ, or thiazides indefinitely, forever. Never put them on thiazide. And never put somebody who suffered from hyponatremia for any cause on hydrochlorothiazide. And this is usually will correct things quickly. And also we liberalize, let them have salt. Because remember, the problem, this will impair dilution effect, right? Now we DC that, giving them salts, that should fix that then now urine can be diluted and we can get rid of excess water never put them back on hctz or thiazides diuretics now after that we said if it's not in stagionary disease or thiazides and here before i forget you don't need really need to give them uh, isotonic solutions you, you just dc this let them eat put them on a regular salt diet and the sodium will correct by those measures now Remember, we said once we rule out this and this, now we assess volume status, whether we are dealing with hypervolemia, hypervolemia. Okay, let's start with the hypervolemic hyponatremia, like heart failure cirrhosis. These people need the following. They need water restriction. And water restriction, as some people say, 2,000 cc or 1,500. But at least you need to make it 800 cc a day to really works. So remember that. And then they need diuretics, mainly loop diuretics. Okay, they need sodium restriction because they have increase in the extra of uh, compartment size because that related to increased total body sodium. So you need to restrict their, their sodium. So usually we put them on two gram sodium diet or low sodium diet. Do not use HCTZ uh, with those patients. Do not use thiazide diuretics with those patients. Do not use water restriction in heart failure patients or liver cirrhosis patients or volume overload patients unless there is hyponatremia. Remember that. And in all cases, you monitor their uh, sodium um, every four, uh, two to four to six hours based on how how close you need to monitor sodium because we'll talk about shortly if the sodium correct quickly, what, what do we do? Okay. Now, let's move to hypovolemic hyponatremia. Simply here, you need to restore the ECF uh, volume uh, by giving isotonic solution, uh, mainly normal saline. And you need to replace potassium if it's depleted, especially with vomiting. So that restoring the ECF size will switch off ADH and suppress ADH and let the sodium come up. Would this work with renal losses as well? Like let's say over diuresis from furosemide. Yes, you stop furosemide, you restore the ACF size. It's the same, um, same principle. Now let's move to euvolemic hyponatremia. The euvolemic hyponatremia, again, as we talked, are we dealing with uh, excessive water drinking? Uh, with uh, and hyponatremia despite maximally diluted urine and here we said there is two um, conditions uh, psychogenic polydipsia um, ecstasy and in all these patients you just need to water restrict them a good water restriction and close monitoring very close monitoring because these usually develop acute hyponatremia and I always admit them and monitor them closely and get their sodium Q to two to four hours. How about T uh, low salute load, which is T and toast syndrome and uh, beer potomania. So simply here, T and toast, we let them replace that salute load, give them high salute diet, uh, restore their salute load to around 600 to 900 millismol a day, and that will fix it. Water restriction would work as well with them and closely monitor that because these patients at risk and beer butomania and here all at risk of quick auto uh, quick correction so you need to be careful beer butomania the same you can stop alcohol water restriction their sodium will improve that will bring us also to if the uvula uvula uh, related to adrenal insufficiency you diagnose that you treat it with steroids right hypothyroidism and usually if this happens from hypothyroidism, usually with severe hypothyroidism, we treat it. Now, SIADH, of course, you need to find the underlying cause. And there is a long list. 
I don't have time to mention it here, but you can find it anywhere. Um, but medications, especially antipsychotic medication, antidepressants, nausea can cause that, post-operative stress can cause that, uh, pulmonary uh, disease can cause, it's a long list. The mainstay treatment is water restriction, right? So that's one trick, you less than 800 cc a day, because the ADH being released inappropriately, so we need to decrease the water excess in the body. One way is to decrease water intake. The other way, try to dilute the urine or impair the concentration of the urine, because um, that's how, if you remember ADH, open the aquaporin channel and allow water to go through the osmotic drive to the medullary interstitium. So one way is to impair the ability of the kidney to create that osmotic drive and create the concentrated medullary interstitium. How? Loop diuretics. So remember we said loop diuretics, they're the, the pump that absorb sodium, potassium, and two chlorides to create a hypertonic medullary interstitium. We explained that earlier and allow when the ADH open the aquaporin channel, the water to follow the osmotic drive there. If you impair the concentration, that will allow less water to follow the osmotic drive because you you kind of creating less hypertonic medullary interstitium. And also another trick, you can give them salt and see NACL tablet, increase the salute load in the urine to drag more water with it as well. So, and treat, of course, the underlying one. Some, they use, still as ADH, demiclocycline, which is an antagonist. And there is another medication called tolvaptan, which is an antagonist as well for ADH. Now, we have to be careful here. Let me open a new page. If you get to use tolvaptan, this should be mainly if you are unable to reverse the cause of ADH release. And if you use this, please cancel any water restriction. Because simply when you use this medication, that means ADH is as, as if ADH is not working, it's not there. Because this will block ADH at the receptors. So as if it's not there, as if it's suppressed, so there is no need to do water restriction. If you continue water restriction with tovaptan, suddenly the sodium will go really high. And if you get to this point, so that means this is mainly for chronic use. If you get to this point, please let nephrology handle that. Don't do it in your own. Because last thing, the last thing you need, the sodium went from 120 to 140 in one in one day. So I need to be careful. I tell my resident, do not use 12 aptan. And if you're thinking about using 12 aptan, let nephrology be on board, please. But the mainstay is treating the underlying problem of that. Now, the main issue here, we treating this now is monitoring. That's the reason we do BMP or sodium level or CMP Q2 to 4 to 6 hours, right? If you are using hypertonic saline, you have to every hour. Why? To make sure it doesn't correct more than prefer 8 milli equivalent per day. And when we use hypertonic saline, usually we try to raise sodium by six milli, four to six milli equivalent in the first six hours. What happens now if for some reason my sodium was 120 and six hours went to 128 and that was my goal in 24 hours. And at the concern, if this continue, this will become higher and the next day will be 140, right? So this is where sometimes you have to reverse your management a little bit. What does it mean? Some cases, once you reverse the underlying problem, they start auto-correcting very quickly on their own without adding any other measure. So that's what the reason we monitor sodium. Now, what if this happened? Of course, that's one of the reason we recommend consulting nephrology in cases where there is a moderate to severe hyponatremia or when you're thinking to use 3% saline. But here you have to reverse things. Whatever you're doing now, you have to slow it down. But in some cases, we tell patients to start drink water. DC water restriction, right? That's one thing you could do to slow down. Or um, instead of 800, we can make it 2000 cc or 1500 cc. You can use D5W IV. And we use DDAVP. We can use it 
nasally or IV. DDAVP is like vasopressin like synthetics, right? It works like ADH. So here we're trying to slow down. So we we do this, give this, and continue monitoring sodium because our goal is to keep this around 128 till next day. How do we expect who will correct it quickly? There are some conditions they are kind of known that they can correct quickly. And these conditions are uh, volume depletion, those with severe hyponatremia less than 105, ecstasy, post-operative hyponatremia, low solute load like tea and toast and beer butomania, thiazide diuretics once they're stopped, and reversible causes of SIADH. So these are conditions that we have to pay a closer attention to the sodium and not try to over correct. Okay. Why we try to prevent overcorrect is to prevent what? Osmotic demyelination syndrome. And those are more prominent to develop this are chronic hyponatremia, alcoholics, malnourished, liver disease, burns, and those with hypokalemia. So that's why we always make sure we treating hypokalemia along with hyponatremia. So these are you pay close attention and that's how you monitor them. Once their sodium reach getting close to normal, you can space out the monitoring and just let them go back to their normal um, routine at home, excluding whatever caused their hyponatremia to make sure the sodium doesn't drop again. So that's how we approach the uh, hyponatremia in the hospital. Again, major points to remember, you do not need central line for 3% saline, uh, call nephrology early if needed, especially for moderate to severe hyponatremia, for sure, if they are gonna use 3% saline. If you use 3% saline, check sodium every hour and put patients in ICU if possible, or at least IMC, intermediate care unit. Avoid overcorrection and slow it down if it happens by reversing some of the causes you need to. And if you, sometimes some sm smart people, they can tell if the patient already overcorrecting by looking at their urine, the patients start having um, what we call water diuresis, urine output increase, and they are now producing diluting urine, which you can check urine osmolality at that point or um, specific gravity. But again, in most hospital, urine osmolality and serum osmolality is not, the results will not be available right away. So it's kind of useless. I hope that now you have a clear understanding of hyponatremia, how it happens, the mechanism, and how do we tackle hyponatremia and treat it in inpatient settings.